commonly used attack vectors for web applications that you should be familiar with. We'll discuss each of these briefly, so begin by logging into your DDWA web application on your Metasploitable system, and then verify that the security is set to low. Then select SQL injection, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the source code. And by the source code, we can tell that what this application does is it sends this SQL query back to the backend database. And it queries the last name and first name for a user based on a provided user ID. So if we return to the web application, Here you can see what it's supposed to do. When we enter an ID number, it provides us with a first name and last name. Then what we want to do is attempt to alter the output of the web application by modifying the query that's sent to the back end so that it provides a condition that's unconditionally true. This is called a tautological injection. And it's a commonly used SQL injection attack to bypass authentication or to gather information from the tables. So here, we'll enter a 1 and then close off the quotations, and OR 0 equals 0, because anything OR 0 equals 0 is always true. And then because the quotations were already closed out, we want to comment out the quotations that are closed out and sent to the back. So we'll enter a pound sign and then click Submit. And then that drops us every single username both first name and last name and user ID that was in the database because the condition is true for every single user. Next we'll perform a cross-site scripting attack. So how this is supposed to work is a user enters a name and then a message and then clicks sign guestbook. However, because of the vulnerability associated with this web application, we can actually execute scripts from it. To demonstrate this, we'll enter the name script, and then do a basic script that creates an alert. And then we'll pass that alert the string XSS exploitation, and then we'll close out the script. Then when we click sign guestbook, it will actually execute that script. A commonly used cross-site scripting technique is defacement attacks using iframe injection. So we'll enter the name script2. And then we'll do iframe source equals Then we'll do the web address for packed publishing. And then close it out. Click sign guestbook. Here you'll notice that the first exploit we performed is also executed in sequence with our new script injection. This can be an effective way to string multiple scripts together. to allow us a place to upload different image files. However, because it does not screen the files that are uploaded, we can actually upload a malicious script here. So we'll click Upload. And then we can see that our file was uploaded successfully. Then select Command Execution. And this is meant to be just a ping utility where you enter an IP address and it performs a ping on that IP address and tells you if the host is live. The way this is supposed to work is you enter an IP address and then click submit and it returns back the results. So we'll attempt to string this together with another command that will then follow it. So we'll use cat and then the location of the password file. And as you can see, we are now able to read the contents of that file. 
We can also execute the malicious script that we had previously uploaded. So we'll use Python and then specify the path of that script. And then malicious script.py. And then click submit. And there you have it. Malicious script executed successfully. So those are a number of different attacks that you can use to exploit vulnerabilities existing on a web application.